hi welcome back to the next lecture uh, this is this chapter is linear equations in two variables this is the last chapter of the algebra uh, series of class 9 cbsc mathematics so let us uh, you know uh, get to understand this actually in the 9th standard there is very very uh, little applications of this uh, linear equations in two variables but when you go to the 10th you have a lot of understanding to do and because of uh, as i told in my last video that i have actually covered the coordinate geometry before starting this so we'll also do some graphical understanding of this particular uh, thing thereafter you know it will become very easy for you to understand conceptually uh, so let's go for it so first of all let us understand what are uh, linear equations is two variables to go there to make that understand isko samjhane ke liye ye bahut important hai ki aapko agar yaad hai ki hamara jo algebraic expressions kya tha specifically jo linear wala kyunki aap sab kuch linear leke hum log deal kar rahe hain so what was a linear expression a linear expression was a polynomial of degree 1 फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए एक्स प्लस बी ये हो गया आपका ए लीनियर एक्सप्रेशन सच दैट ए कॉमा बी बिलोंग टू रियल नंबर एंड ए नॉट इक्वल टू जीरो सो बोथ दिज ए एंड बी आर रियल नंबर ए कैन नॉट बी जीरो बिकॉज इफ ए इज जीरो देन देर इज नो एक्स सो देर फोर वी बेसिकली कॉल दिस एज अ लीनियर एक्सप्रेशन नाउ if if this is a linear expression how does it become an equation so when we give a value to this particular thing then it becomes a equation so ax plus b equals to something something so it can be normally we make it zero because if we put it as a constant so then if i bring it on the left side then b say for example if we say that ax plus b equals to c which means a x plus b minus c equals to zero. So this can always be, you know, represented by something. Say it is p. So again, it becomes a x plus p equals to zero. So the simplest way of expressing it is a x plus b equals to zero. So in mathematics, now that you are in class nine, you have to understand that in algebra specifically, we do a lot of applications of mathematics through using. a b and all those letters which represent something some kind of number so a and b are here real numbers x is my variable term we have actually understood what was variable very clearly when we uh, started the chapter of uh, you know uh, polynomials so this when you apply an equal to sign equal to sign then this becomes an equation okay now this is an equation now if you you can very clearly understand if a x plus b equals to 0 then x equals to what it is minus b by a right so if you act this is a very specific real number this is not a variable that will keep on changing a and b can change but for in for a particular value of a and a particular value of b for a particular real number value of a and a particular real number value of b a x plus b equals to 0 equation will have a very fixed value of x that is x equals to min minus b by a so only minus b by a will actually solve this particular equation so minus b by a you can say is the zero of the of this uh, you know uh, polynomial so agar if if this is a real number line say like this it is a real number line thoda teda ho gaya please don't mind that so there is something 1 2 3 dot 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 there is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 dot 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 so this is some value something on this there is one particular dot which is minus b by a something something either it is on this side or this side but it is something okay some particular point so when we actually express it in a one dimensional number line see this is a one dimensional number you have only one one dimension there is no two dimension then this is a particular point uh, which is expressed by this so why because we have only a x plus b is a you know expression with a single variable x now say for example if we represent it in this particular form 
ए एक्स प्लस बी वाई प्लस सी इक्वल्स टू जीरो और वी कैन रिप्रेजेंट इट फॉर एग्जाम्पल ए एक्स प्लस बी इक्वल्स टू वाई सम वैल्यू वाई सो वॉट वी डू इज बी प्रैक्टिकली एड एन अदर डायमेंशन टू इट ओके सो फॉर वेर इफ इफ एक्स कैन बी जीरो वन टू एनी थिंग सो द वैल्यू ऑफ वाई विल बिकम इफ एक्स इज वन फॉर एक्स इक्वल्स टू वन ए एक्स प्लस बी विल बी ए प्लस बी विच इज इक्वल्स टू वाई सो वाई वाई वन ओके सो वेन फॉर वाई इक्वल्स टू वन सो इफ यू रिमेंबर वी यूज टू राइट अ पॉलिनामियल इन वट फॉर्म पी एक्स इक्वल्स टू समथिंग 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 सो इफ वी एक्चुअली मेक दिस पी एक्स वाई वी आर रिप्रेजेंटिंग इट इज वाई एंड वी आर पुटिंग इट ऑन दिस ग्राफ सो द वैल्यू ऑफ दिस वाई एज इट वेरीज विद रेस्पेक्ट टू एक्स द द एंटायर फंक्शन दिस दिस एक्सप्रेशन और फंक्शन और वट एवर यू कॉल इट देन वी बेसिकली कॉल दिस काइंड ऑफ एन इक्वेशन एज अ पॉलिनोमियल इन टू वेरिएबल बिकॉज वी हैव टू वैल्यूज ऑफ x and y so practically what happens is it becomes something like that it can be it can be something like this or it can be like this but there is always a function of y for any particular y will be some function of x what is that x that is x plus b here okay so if we represent it by in this format x plus b y plus c equals to 0 then what is y y is equals to minus a x plus c by right this is the function so this 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 y equals to if i write then this is this so this is just one way of representing it this is one way of representing it this is one way of representing it but whatever way it be if you see it very clearly ax plus by plus c equals to 0 is basically always a straight line and there are infinite number of x's and y's which will actually satisfy so if if say particular we go to a particular value of x which is alpha gives a particular value of y which is beta which satisfies this equation then we call that the ordered pair alpha beta is a solution or root or root of ax plus by plus c equals to 0 this is how we talk about it okay this is the language we use so you clearly understand from here that a equation of the form ax plus by plus c equals to 0 such that a comma b comma c are real numbers a not equals to 0 b not equals to 0 is a expression this is the expression when we put it equals to 0 it becomes an equation okay so only this much is an expression now when we put a equal to sign and put a value 0 to the right side then it becomes equation what is the degree of x and y all one so this is linear and x and y how many variables are there two variables so this is into okay so this is a linear equation in two variables okay so so you have got a more or less understanding of this one so if what kind of questions can normally come in a, in in this particular chapter so first of all they might say that you know i give you an equation uh, say say this kind of an equation 4y minus 3 equals to root 2x now they say that make it of the form ax plus by plus c equals to 0 and tell what are the a b's and c's so if i change it into this form what we will get we will get is this equals implies Root two x minus four y plus three equals to zero. I take all these things on the right side. Okay, so a equals to root two, b equals to minus four, and c equals to three. So this can be one kind of a problem that might come. Okay.
नाउ फॉर एग्जाम्पल किसी ने दे दिया वाई इक्वल्स टू फाइव इज दिस पॉलिनामियल इन टू वेरिएबल्स ये इट इज इट इज नॉट दैट इट इज नॉट वी कैन ऑलवेज राइट दैट जीरो इन टू एक्स प्लस वन इन टू वाई माइनस फाइव इक्वल्स टू जीरो वेर ए इक्वल्स टू जीरो बी इक्वल्स टू वन एंड सी इक्वल्स टू माइनस फाइव सो विच एक्चुअली वट डज इट मीन वाई इक्वल्स टू फाइव वाई इक्वल्स टू फाइव इट मीन्स दैट no matter what is the value of x y will always be 5 so actually if we draw it something like that so x can vary if this is 5 then y equals to 5 is something like that this this is the line straight line of y equals to 5 which means no matter what is the value of x y will always be having a same value that is 5 okay you got my point so now we will go to we'll clear this now we will go to understand that how we actually draw it so one thing i am telling you it is a equation of a straight line whenever we draw a linear equation in two variable on a graph we will get a straight line and and and, and there are infinitely many solutions because as we change x the value of y changes okay for example if i take an equation like this 4x minus 3y plus 1 equals to 0 okay so let if if what what happens say let us let us represent it in this way you always make a you know table like this okay now if x you give the various options of x equals to 0 then you give 1 then you give minus 1 then you give 2 then you give 5 so this is arbitrary just put whatever you feel like and now you see what is the value of y you get if x is equals to 0 then what do we get for the first case minus 3y plus 1 equals to 0 means y equals to 1 by 3 so this is 1 by 3 It's a real number. It's a rational number. It's a fraction, but it's a real number. Okay. If what if x equals to one? So four into one minus three y plus one equals to zero. So four into one is four minus. Ah, uh, sorry. This is plus one. So four plus one is five equals to three y or y equals to five by three. So this is another number five by three. What if y equals to minus one? X equals to minus one. So then it is minus four plus one equals to three y, which means minus three by three. So y equals to minus one. So this becomes minus one. Okay. So at minus one, minus one, this is there. Then if it is x equals to two, then this is three y equals to eight. Plus one nine, so y equals to three. So this becomes three. And for y x equals to five, so five four is a twenty plus one twenty one. Twenty one divided by three seven. So this becomes seven. So you see, at these various points, you 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 always keep getting this particular kind of thing. Okay. so these kind of questions will keep coming now of course you have to find out they might ask to ask you to draw that so say they give an equation any equation they give you say for example they give you this equation 2x plus 3y equals to 11 11 okay so if they ask that why do a graph of this so you see a a a equals to 2 b equals to 3 and c equals to minus 11 okay so you you bring it on the left side you will get it minus 11 equals to 0 now how to actually basically draw a graph like this see the best way there are i basically there are two methods to it method number 1 which i personally prefer this is my method you can always say it is normally not used in the books you first put x equals to 0 if x equals to 
it means y equals to 11 by 3 something like this okay now put y equals to 0 if y, because x is 0 means it is on the y axis we have learned that y equals to 0 means it is in the x axis the distance from the x axis is 0 that is why y equals to 0 so if y equals to 0 then x equals to 11 by 2 11 by 2 is like 5 point something so something like this okay this is 11 by 2 now if I, if somebody asks you what is the you know graph of it just join these two lines and extend it on both the sides so something like something like this okay now this is not i'm not i'm not able to draw because of my pen tab i this is not my pen but actually you put a you know kind of a in, a, in the graph paper you plot 11 by 3 11 by 3 you can understand it is 3 point something because 3 3 is a 9 so 3.67 will be the kind of the point out there and 11 by 2 will be how much 5.5 uh, .5, okay 5.5 will be 11 by 2 so this will be 5.5 5.5 okay so now then you uh, you basically if you convert them into decimal form you mark them like this and draw use a scale and mark a straight line now they might ask you that find the value of 1 find the value of y find the value of y for x equals to 7 and x equals to minus 8 x equals to minus 8 so you go straight line on this this is 5.5 .5. you go a little bit you find 7 for the 7 of value 7 find out what is the value of y y will be something in the negative domain again for the x equals to minus 8 x will be minus 8 somewhere here find out what is the value of y for that and you can put that for x equals to 7 y equals to this for x equals to minus 8 y equals to this and you can always check it in this graph in this equation and find out if x equals to 7 then how much this is 14 so this will be 3 y equals to 11 minus 14 which is minus 3 means y equals to minus 1 so this is minus 1 and if this is minus 8 so this is minus 16 plus 3y equals to 11 means y equals to 11 plus 16 by 3 this is 16 26 27 by 3 so this is 9 so y will be something like this will be longer so this is 9 okay so you check that so first you draw it in the graph and then you check that okay so it's a very very simple form or sometimes you can say that they, they ask you that you take any two instead of taking x equals to 0 and y equals to 0 you can take an arbitrary value of x say 1 or 2 that is method number 2 that they say is you take any any uh, arbitrary any arbitrary uh, value of x and uh, thereafter put the arbitrary values of y the one the way i have done it here so you make a table like this at least for three points and then you do that and then you draw the graph why three points because that gives you a confidence to show that see this actually is a straight line this is not uh, you know uh, not that uh, we are drawing it arbitrarily this is in reality a straight line okay so this this is the kind of things uh, questions that might come one more for example some uh, you know uh, big questions can come like a taxi charges rupees 20 for the first kilometer and at the rate of 12 per kilometer for the subsequent distance covered so taking the total distance covered as x kilometer the total fare y write the linear equation depicting the relation between x and y okay then from the graph draw the graph of x and y and from the graph find the taxi charges for covering okay so this is a very interesting question if you see what they are saying is that a taxi charges rupees 20 for the for the first kilometer and then it charges rupees 12 per kilometer thereafter after 
फर्स्ट किलोमीटर ठीक है सो आफ्टर फर्स्ट किलोमीटर सो टेकिंग द सब्सिक्वेंट डिस्टेंस सो टेकिंग द टोटल डिस्टेंस ओके नाउ इज सेइंग द टोटल डिस्टेंस कवर्ड इज एक्स एंड फेयर इज वाई ड्रॉ द ग्राफ ऑफ इट ओके सो वट विल फर्स्ट राइट द इक्वेशन एंड देन ड्रॉ द ग्राफ सो वट विल बी द इक्वेशन फॉर दिस वन यू टेल मी सो द फर्स्ट किलोमीटर इज एट रुपीज ट्वेंटी विच इज फिक्सड सो द मोमेंट somebody completes the first kilometer and reaches the second kilometer okay so then what will be the value so say the first kilometer is uh, right so we, we we write it something like this x minus 1 into 12 per kilometer plus 20 is the fair of the thing right this this should be the uh, you know equation right why because see the fair is first kilometer is you know 20 rupees so here if if somebody is traveling for 2 kilometers 5 kilometers so x is a distance in kilometer so the first kilometer you and x cannot be negative somebody actually cannot travel on the minus side so here you have to understand that the x is always positive it it can start from 0 to go to 1 and then it will go positive so this is the thing okay now if you actually draw the graph of this particular thing you will realize that you have to be very clear uh, about this particular thing so what is the actual graph that is coming so this is 12x minus 12 plus 20 equals to y so this is 12x minus 8 equals to y okay so this is the kind of sorry not minus this is plus hmm. okay now if we draw a graph so at x equals to x cannot be zero means x has to be x can never reach zero because the person is actually not traveling okay so the x actually starts from something which is little bit more than uh, you know Zero. It basically starts from something like uh, you know uh, one. It, it it has to start from one because anything up to one kilometer is anyway uh twenty rupees. So up to say if this is one, this is two, this is three. So x cannot go negative here, and up to this is basically a fixed value, which is say this is twenty, this is thirty. This is forty, and it goes on. Okay, so at x equals to two, what will be the value? Twelve into two, twenty-four plus eight is thirty-two. So something like this, like this. So at x equals to three, is twelve three is a thirty-six plus eight. Thirty-six plus eight is forty-four. So something like this. So if you see, it starts from here. and it goes like this okay this is very important it cannot go negative you have to understand that x cannot be less than 0 because x is fixed before this and then it cannot go negative this side does not exist so actually what we we uh, you know uh, represent this when we actually uh, we have not done set theories and others but if we actually represent this particular scenario here then we represent it is like this that y equals to 20 such that x belongs na no, not belongs this is for, uh, for all 
this is the sign called for all okay for all 0 less than x less than equal to 1 okay equals to 12x plus 8 for all x greater than 1 this is how we actually this is the right definition of this particular problem but this is a very complicated definition when you go senior classes you represent it like this so for the f according to the question that has been answered this is the kind of definition but please don't put it in the in your uh, current uh, school curriculum see my whole purpose is to teach you maths not to teach you the school based mathematics to get numbers so this is where the exact understanding of this particular problem as per the question that has been given that the car it, a person is traveling in the car for the first one kilometer the value is 20 rupees after that 12 rupees per kilometer this this is 12 rupees per kilometer so then if the distance traveled is x then this is what is the scenario so this is how we actually define this particular problem so the first part is that it's a straight line like this then from here it goes like this okay so this is how we should actually define this particular problem now he is saying that find out what is the value uh, of money that charges for 12 kilometers so you find out where it is 12 put x equals to 12 find the distance you can also put it here 12 12 is a 144 plus 8 so this is 152 this is the kind of number that we get in this particular scenario okay so this is there then there is a uh, problem that comes for the temperatures Fahrenheit's and everything so this you understood right I mean the kind of questions that might come so this is a very more uh, detailed description of the of the problem the first 0 to 1 is going to be your uh, y equals to 20 and then from 20 onwards it will become this so this is how you actually should divide probably if your school teacher understands or thinks that at the ninth standard you are uh, you should write then you can write like this actually you can you know you should take this problem to your school teacher and ask that shall we write it like this or shall we simply write you know that y equals to uh, 12 x plus 8 and continue with that okay so these are very simple problems as i see my uh, I request you that you know you go to this uh, book as I always keep telling R.S. Agarwal uh, take the R.S. Agarwal and solve the problems take the NCRT and solve the problems I'll do one last problem here and then I will close this particular uh, chapter so the problem uh, seemed quite interesting to me if the work done by a force applied on a body is directly proportional to the distance traveled by the body express this in form of an equation in two variables taking the constant force as three units also read from the graph the work done when the distance traveled by the body is zero unit and two units so see let's let's understand this if the work done by the force applied on a body work done will is directly proportional to the distance traveled so let the distance traveled be x so work done is this directly proportional to the distance traveled which is x <coughs> express this in the form of an equation of true variable always remember if something is there are two kinds in which a, a thing can uh, you know prop be proportional one is called directly proportional one is called indirectly proportional what is a directly direct proportionality direct proportionality means if x increases work done increases and what is indirectly proportional if x increases then work done decreases so how do we write if it is directly proportional we write we give this variable sign and we write x in case it is indirectly proportional had it been indirectly proportional we would be writing it 1 by x which means if it in if x increases work done decreases but in this particular case we don't have 
this scenario as per the problem it is says that work done is directly proportional to x and this constant the if whenever we like get something like a variable how we actually put it into equation we use a constant value for that what we write is this equals to some constant f into x so this becomes a constant value okay this one so in this particular case it has given that the constant value which is called the force as 3 units so this whatever be its unit it is equals to 3 so we actually write w equals to 3x this is your basic definition that has been given okay also read from the graph the work done when the distance traveled by the body is 0 and 2 units so actually this w is is our y here okay and this distance is our x here so now we have w equals to 3x so if you see this this is 3x minus w equals to 0 this is our equation but we write simply w equals to 3x now if we draw the graph of it what we see at x equals to 0 w equals to 0 the con there is no constant term okay now for so this is basically an equation of this this kind like this of course there is no negative distance travel you cannot travel in a negative distance so this side we are not taking the, the this very clearly it is defined there is a very clear condition of this for all x greater than equals to 0 you have to understand that x negative does not exist in again in this particular scenario but then again in being a class 9 standard here it uh, question they will not talk about it so now if x equals to greater than equal to 0 because it starts from 0 so x equals to 0 when there is no traveling happen work done equals to 0 if again x equals to 2 units they have asked that find out at 2 units at 2 units what will be this 2 into 3 so this will be around 6 units 6 units of work done for 2 for x equals to 2 okay so this is how this kind of problems can come and you have to draw. So that's it. Also uh, remember as I, I told you that uh, these are possibilities. The So for, for all those equations where there is no x or x equals to 0 what is the x equals to 0 x equals to 0 means the distance sorry x equals to 0 is the equation of y axis x distance from uh, uh, from the distance on the x line is always 0 means distance from the y axis is 0 which is y axis ok similarly y equals to 0 will be the x axis is the equation of the x axis okay why because distance y equals to 0 means distance from the x axis is 0 which means it is exactly falling on the x axis so this is this if we have only one variable like x equals to 3 which means if x equals to 3 for all values of y so this is a line parallel to the y axis similarly y equals to 5 say y equals to 5 is a line like this no matter what the value of x is y is always equals to 5 so these are some of the things that you need to understand other than that there is nothing more in it solve these uh, miscellaneous choice questions please uh, do this particular book I am telling you this is a fantastic book there is Adi Sharma also which is also a very good book so uh, it's up to you I mean you know one book this uh, R.D. Sharma or uh, R.S. Agarwal or and and NCRT is good enough for you to have a detailed understanding of this particular chapter. I think you have got a understanding of what this is in this particular class. In the 10th standard we will be giving you you know two such equations and you will be asked to solve that. They are called simultaneous equations. In this particular uh, year, means in the 9th standard, what I come to see is that only the concept is given that what is a linear equation. So, in the 
in the 10th standard two such equations will be given and they will ask you to find the roots of it it is very easy if there are two equations which are given so some, some one is say like this another is say like this so we see that these two roots are being uh, you know they are cutting each other at some alpha comma beta and ordered pair alpha comma beta then alpha beta is the solution to the this simultaneous equations then because there is a1 x plus b1 y plus c1 equals to 0 a2 x plus b2 y plus c2 equals to 0 these are two kinds of a1 b1 c1 a2 b2 c2 all belong are real numbers a1 a2 b1 b2 are not zeros cannot be zeros then these two sets are called simultaneous equations and they ask you that find the particular way solve these simultaneous equations this is how they talk about the problem solve these simultaneous equations means find that particular value alpha beta which satisfies both these two equations so how it we can find it draw the first equation draw maybe let this one be the uh, first equation let this be the second equation so when where they cut at some alpha beta this is the solution to this simultaneous equation this happens in your 10th standard i am just giving you some ideas so that you know you understand maybe one or two problems can come but when such problem comes the best way to solve is just draw both the things draw them see where they are cutting and you get the solution as simple as that so this is the best way to solve okay all the best algebra finished now we coordinate i have already done so arithmetic done algebra done coordinate geometry done practice them very nicely next video we are going for geometry and it is going to be real fun in that one be assured great have a great day